Hi everyone, in this video we're going to model this Stormer that you see in the viewport here. This is a beginner tutorial and it's going to be fairly slow, but you will need a basic knowledge of Blender in order to be able to follow along. You can download a reference image that we're going to use for modeling this object. I am using two add-ons in this video. One is Wonder Mesh and the other one is Machine Tools. And for what we're doing in this video, you can use the free versions of both of these add-ons. I will post links to the plugins in the video description below. This is a polygon modeling video, so we're not going to use booleans and we're going to keep the mesh nice and clean and eventually we're going to end up with geometry like this. I hope you'll enjoy this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to my front view and hit Shift and A, and we're going to add our reference image. And I will add a selectable filter here and switch that on. So now we can't accidentally select the image and move it. And if I click on this red icon here, I will jump to the settings in the properties panel. And here I'm going to change just a few things. I'm only going to switch off perspective and I'm going to switch on opacity. So let's do something like this for now. The way I'm going to do this is by creating an outline of the entire object first, and then we're going to add all the details. And we're going to start with flat geometry and then extrude it into three dimensional geometry. And if you take a look at this, this top part here is a section of a circle. So we can start with a disc. I'm going to use a Wonder Mesh object here. So Shift A, go to Wonder Mesh Primitives, and I'm going to add a ring. And let's rotate it around the X axis 90 degrees like so. And I'm going to move this down. And if you go to the object data properties here, you have all of the settings for this Wonder Mesh object under the Wonder Mesh data section here. Let's go ahead and increase the radius. And I'll do something like 420 looks about right. Let's hit Z and go to wireframe. I'm also going to add a couple of segments here. And let's move this into place. Let's do something like this. And I think that looks good. We can also use an inner radius here. So let's do that. And I'm going to zoom in and then hold down shift and left click and drag to adjust the radius. And I'm going to line this up with the top of the windows here. We can also use the section settings here. So if I increase the first one, I can move that to about here. And if I decrease the section two setting, I can do something like this. And again, let's zoom in a little bit and fine tune that. Again, I'm holding down shift to do that. Okay, so that's looking good. Right now we have too many segments, I'm going to decrease the number and we want an even number of segments here. So we're getting an edge right here at the center. And that will make it a little bit easier to mirror the object over from one side to the other. This image has some perspective distortion. I'm just going to focus on the left side as my reference. And then we're going to mirror this over to the other side later. Next, I'm going to convert this object to a regular mesh with this button here. And then we need to add some more geometry. But first of all, I'm going to select my reference image. Let's go ahead and rename this to ref image. And I'm going to rename this one to dormer walls and roof. I'm going to create only three objects here. One will be the wall and the roof. The other one will be the window frame. And then the third object will be the glass. I'm going to make the reference image a little bit brighter. And we need to add some geometry here. And we need one, two, three, four, five additional edge loops. So let's tab into edit mode. And I'm going to deselect everything here and then hit Control R. And let's make a loop cut here and move these edges down to about here. And I'm going to make another loop cut. And let's do another cut and put these edges here. 
and we need one edge loop here and a last one up here. We also need some edges over here. So let's make some additional loop cuts here. I'm going to put an edge here. We need one, two, three, four edges. So let's move the next loop to about here. And this one to about here. And the last one, I'll move it over to about here. And let's jump back into object mode. I'll just decrease the opacity again of the reference image. So next we need to make some adjustments to the geometry here. And we're going to do this in edit mode again. So let's go to vertex mode here. And I'm going to use the knife, snap it to this point, hit C to make a straight cut, left click and hit spacebar to finish the cut. And then I'm going to select all of these vertices here, shift and left click twice on this one to make it the active vertex and then hit M and merge at last. And over here, I'm going to make a cut from this point. Again, hit C and cut this edge here. Hit spacebar to finish the cut. Select these two verts and M and merge at last. And this is going to be a little bit of a problem because this top part will be extruded forward. And that means this section will look very straight. We need even segments here. And that basically means we need another edge loop in here. So let's hit Control R, left click and right click to place an edge loop right at the center here. And let's move this vertex up a little bit. And I'll just go to my overlays and switch off the grid. Now over here, I'm going to grab this vertex here, hit G twice and then slide it along this edge and line this vertex up with this line in the reference image here. And over here, I'm going to grab this vertex and slide it over to about here. We can also get rid of everything on the right side. So let's select these verts here, hit X and delete vertices. And if you select these ones here at the center and hit N to show the side panel here. And if you go to the item tab under transform, you can see that these verts are not exactly lying on the Z axis. So I'm going to left click here, change that to zero, hit enter, and then I'm going to hide the side panel again. Because we've moved some vertices around here, the segments are not even down here. So I'm going to select these edges and then right click, go to the loop tools and use the space option to even out the distance between these edges. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I have a shortcut for that because I use it so much. And that's looking good. Now there's a few more things we need to do over here. Let's go into polygon mode. We need to select these polygons here and all of the ones in between. And delete those faces. And if I go back to solid view, this is what we have so far. So now we can start extruding the edges at the bottom down to create the rest of the shape. So let's grab these edges, left click, control left click, then extrude. I'm going to right click to finish the extrusion and keep all of the edges at the same position here. And then I'm going to move these down and hit S, Z and zero to make them straight. I'm going to move these down to about here. Extrude and move these edges down to here. And I'm going to extrude this edge over to about here. Okay, and that's all the geometry that we need to create the rest of the shape. So let's go to face mode and I'm going to loop select these faces here and these ones. And I'm going to extrude these back. So hit extrude and type in minus four. Hit enter to finish the extrusion. And you can do whatever you think looks good here. Let's go back to the front view. And I'm going to deselect these faces here. And we need to make another extrusion. And again, I'm going to extrude these back minus four back to the front view. Now we need to select these polygons here and extrude those back. Let's do minus three this time, something like this. 
And next we need to insert these polygons. So let's hit I and do an insert like so maybe. And I'll extrude these back another minus three centimeters. And we need one more extrusion. And first of all, we need to insert the faces. Let's do something like this. And I'm going to extrude these back maybe minus 30 and hit X and delete these faces here. And now I'm going to extrude the roof part. Left click on this polygon, control shift left click on this one over here to select all of these. And I'm going to extrude these forward, maybe three centimeters and then use the ring selection to deselect these faces here and extrude again three centimeters. And let's deselect this row here and again extrude three centimeters and deselect these ones. And I'm going to extrude the top faces, maybe four centimeters. Okay, so that's looking good. And before we extrude the bottom, the side and the top, we need to clean this mesh up a little bit. For example, we need to get rid of these faces over here. So I'm going to delete those. And we also need to delete these ones. I'll switch back to wireframe go to the front view and we also need to grab all of these ones on the right here. So basically I selected all of these polygons here. Let's go ahead and delete those. And next we need to grab all of the vertices here at the center. I'll do this in wireframe mode again. So let's select all of these. And if you have the free version of machine tools, you can line these up pretty easily. Machine Tools has a Alt-A menu, and if you open that, you can align the selection to the top left, right. You can straighten a selection. In this case, I'm going to align them on the right. If you don't have Machine Tools, or if you don't want to use that, what you need to do is make one of the vertices at the center, the active vertex, by Shift and left clicking twice on this vertex here, for example, and then you need to go to your transform pivot point, drop down and select active element. And you can see the gizmo jumps to this active vertex now. And then I can hit S, X and zero to line these up, left click. And let's make sure to switch that back to bounding box. And there you go. Now these are lined up at the center here. So now we can go ahead and extrude the rest of the shape. And I'm going to deselect everything here and then I will loop select the edges down here and I'll also select this one and this one, extrude them, right click, then move them over and snap them to this point here. And in order to be able to do that, you will need to activate vertex snapping up here in this drop down. Let's hit M and merge by distance. And this doesn't remove the overlapping vertices on this corner here. So I'm just going to select everything, hit M again and merge by distance. And now one vertex should be removed here. Let's deselect everything again. And I'm going to loop select the edges here at the back. And let's add these edges here. So we've got all of these ones selected now. I'm going to extrude those, right click, and I'll just move them back a bit. Hit S, Y and zero to scale them down and make this back part straight. I'm also going to again, select everything and do a merge by distance, deselect everything. And let's do this in the right view. I'm going to select the edges here at the back, move them back and snap them to here. Our shape is now basically finished, but we can optimize the geometry a little bit. There's a lot of geometry that we don't really need anymore. And we definitely need to optimize the roof area up here. Let's start at the bottom. I'm going to loop select all of these edges down here. And dissolve them. And you can do that by hitting X and selecting dissolve edges. You could also hit control X to dissolve them immediately. And down here, what we could do is we could grab these two vertices and do a merge at last. 
and then select these edges and control X to dissolve them. And this will give us this triangle here. I'm going to select the edges down here and use subdivide. And then I'm going to move this vertex over and snap it to here. And on this corner here, we can select these three points, make sure to select the corner vertex as the last one and then use M and merge at last. And we can do the same thing down here. And we don't need this second edge loop down here. So I'm going to loop select these edges, select this one and hit control X to dissolve them. And that's cleaning up the entire bottom part here. And as far as the roof is concerned, we'll just merge all the corner vertices. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pick these two. And to make things a little bit faster, I'm going to use machine tools again, which has some options to quickly weld vertices like these. Of course, you can also use M and merge at last. So let's continue doing that. And now we can select all of these edges using the loop selection. And we can hit control X to dissolve them. Let's go ahead and select this loop here and this edge and do another control X to get rid of these edges here. And the last thing we need to do is even out the geometry to make sure we have a nice and smooth curve up here. So let's go ahead and loop select all of these edges here. all the way down to this loop here. And then we need to deselect everything here on the side. And also we need to deselect everything here. And I guess it would be better to do that in wireframe mode. So you can see we have a lot of stuff here that we don't want. Let's see, I'm just going to deselect these ones. And that's all the edges that we need. I think I missed one here. Okay, so let's even out the spacing between these edges using the loop tools. And there we go. So that's fixing that area. And down here, I'm also going to do that left click, control left click, shift left click, control left click, and then space these apart evenly. And if you want to be perfect, you could also select these words here and hit J to create a straight line. I'll just do that for all of these here. And then I'm going to just loop select these ones and use control X to dissolve them. And we're going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to deselect everything and then just loop select everything here. And over here. And let's go to wireframe mode and deselect everything down here again. So we don't want to space the bottom edges, only the ones at the top here. So again, using the loop tools to do that. And there we go. And that is our finished walls and roof. Let's go to object mode. There's one more thing I want to do. Let's go ahead and switch on effect origins only. I'm going to move the origin up here and then hold down control and snap it to the bottom of the object. And in the top view, I'm going to move this over on the Y axis and snap to the center of one of these edges here. And let's go ahead and switch off effect origins only again. And now we can go to the modifier properties and add a mirror modifier. I'm going to apply this. And then I'm going to dissolve these edges here. 
And I'm also going to apply a bevel modifier. And let's go ahead and change a few things here. If the object is further away from the camera, a chamfer would be enough to get highlights on the edges here. If I switch off my overlays here, you can see that, well, the bevel is a bit big. Let's go ahead and decrease the amount to maybe, I don't know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, something like that. And by doing this, we will use a lot less polygons, but for close-ups, you will need more segments for the bevel. And for this tutorial, we're just going to assume that we need a closer shot of this object here. So I'm going to increase the segments to three. I'm going to switch my overlays back on. And if you zoom in a bit, you can see everything looks a bit faceted. Let's right click and use Shade Smooth. And the default corners the bevel modifier creates don't look too good. I'm going to change that. We need to go to geometry here and change the mitre outer to arc and things will look a lot better. And the shading is off a little bit as well. And in some areas it will probably be more obvious if I switch the overlays back off. You can probably see the creases like in this corner here. And in order to fix that, we're going to use the shading options here in the bevel modifier and switch on harden normals and that should fix the issue. Okay, so that's looking good. And if harden normals doesn't do the job, you could also try and add another modifier. So you could try and put a weighted normal modifier on top of everything else. Okay, so that's looking great. That's our first object finished. Next, we're going to do the window frame. And for this, we can reuse the geometry of this object here. So let's tab back into edit mode again. I'm going to switch the bevel modifier off in edit mode. And I'm going to loop select all the edges here. And then use the F key to fill the selection. And then we need to go to face mode and select all three polygons here, hit P and split this off as a separate object using the selection option here. Let's jump back into object mode. I'm going to hit H to, well, not hide everything. I just want to hide the roof and walls. And this is going to be our window frames. Let's go into front view and I'm going to switch to wireframe again. Tab into edit mode, select all the faces and use I. And I'm going to do an inset like this maybe. And let's go ahead and get rid of these faces. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select these edges here and subdivide them. And then I'm going to grab all the vertices over here and delete them. And then I'm going to subdivide these edges here. And let's go ahead and select them S, Z and zero to even those out. And I'm going to move these up a little bit, maybe to about here. I don't want to get too close to the corners here. And then I'm going to hit control B and bevel these a little bit. And I'm going to use an offset of, let, let's try one and see how that looks. One is a little bit small. Let's do maybe two. Okay, and I'll keep them at this position. Like I said, I don't want to get too close to the corners here. And then we can select these two edges here and use the F key. And over here, I'll just extrude this edge, right click and then move it over and we can use the side panel. Let's move this to zero on the X axis here. And let's hide the side panel again. So over here, let's grab these edges here and subdivide them. And let's select these edges here, S, X and zero. And let's move these over to about here, do a control B and bevel these edges and change the offset to two. And we can also select these edges here and use the F key to bridge these edges here. 
And over here, I'm going to subdivide these edges, change the number of cuts to two. And again, select these edges and these edges. And let's change the transform pivot point to individual origins and then hit S, X and zero. And the position is fine. Let's do a bevel control B. And again, I'm using an offset of two here. And then we can grab these edges here and use the F key. And let's do the same thing over here. And it looks like something didn't work here. I'll just select these edges, switch off or switch back to bounding box center here and do SX zero. And I'll do the same thing for these edges here, SX and zero. And these ones look crooked as well. So seems I screwed something up here. Okay, so that's looking better. Now let's jump into object mode. And let's decrease the opacity of the reference image a little bit. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of cuts. So let's use the knife tool, I'm going to cut from here, hit C to make a straight cut and cut this edge here. And that didn't work for some reason. So I'm going to cut into this face. And that's working. And I'll do the same thing over here, hit C to make a straight cut, and then spacebar to finish the cut. And actually, I'm not sure if I did this right here. Let's do this again. I think I forgot to hit the C key. Okay, so let's grab all of these vertices here, make this one the active vertex, and I'm going to weld these to here. And over here, I'll weld these two vertices. And then we can bridge these two edges here with the F key, which will give us an end on here, we're going to fix that in a second. And over here, I'll do the same thing. So use the knife tool hit C to make a straight cut, hit E, to reuse the knife tool, I'm going to cut from here to here, hit spacebar to finish the cut. And well, actually, I think we could leave this, let's just grab these two verts here and hit J to join them. And I'll do the same here. So that's getting rid of the end on here. And then we can use the F key to bridge these two edges here. And over here, let's see, I'll just join these two points and these two. And I'm going to subdivide these two edges. And then just use GG to slide these words over a little bit. I'm also going to even out the spacing between these edges here using the loop tools like before. Okay, something like this. And over here, we also need to make a couple of cuts. So let's use the knife tool again, hit C to make a straight cut, hit E to reuse the knife tool. And I'm going to make a cut like so hit spacebar to finish the cut. And let's see over here, I think I'm going to weld these two words. And let's join these two with a J key. I'm going to join these two with a J key. And I'm going to join these two. Merge these two vertices. And let's see, um, we probably can't just dissolve these edges here, because that will change the curvature up here. So what we need to do is go to face mode and select these three faces and hit the F key to fill. And I guess we could also hit S Z zero to scale these down here. But this will give us an end gone up here, which wouldn't be really bad, but I don't want that. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I think I'll just connect this edge here to create an additional vertex and join these two points. And let's see, let's go to face mode, I just switch to solid here. And I'll select these two polygons, use the F key and use the F key on this one. And we're going to join 
these two words here. So that will give us quads here. Okay, and that's pretty much all we need to do for this object. Let's go back into object mode and I'm going to move the object origin like before, snap it to the bottom of the object and let's see in top view, I'll just snap this back to here, switch off the origin again and let's go ahead and use a mirror modifier. I'm going to keep the bevel modifier which was copied when we split off the selection and let's go ahead and add a mirror modifier to this and apply it. And let's go back into edit mode and select this edge here and dissolve it. And it seems I forgot to join uh, some of the edges here or uh, fill in the edges. So let's go to edge mode and select these two edges here, use the F key and do the same thing over here. So that's looking much better. And in face mode, I'm going to select everything and extrude all of the faces and let's just move these back. The depth doesn't really matter. We're not going to see the back of the object. So I'll make them about this deep and that should be fine. Let's go back to object mode, top view, and I'm going to move the object origin to the center here, like so. Let's unhide our dormer. I'm just going to move the window frames over a little bit to about here maybe. And I think I'll decrease the bevel amount to 0.4 maybe. Okay, let's switch off the overlays. And that's looking pretty nice. The last thing we need to add is the window glass. And for this, I'm going to reuse this object here again, tab into face mode. Let's just grab the bottom faces here, hit shift D to duplicate them, right click, and then use P and split off the selection here. So back into object mode, I'm going to, let's see, this is the windows, the window glass. Okay, so let's rename this to glass and I'll just hide everything else for now. And what we're going to do with this one is I'll move the object origin to the bottom here, like so. Let's go to the top view. Okay, and then I'm going to hit S, Y and scale this down to about here maybe. And in face mode, I'm going to select all the polygons here and extrude those up. And let's unhide our window frames here. Jump back into object mode and let's go to the top view. I'll just move the glass over and snap it to the center of the window frames here. Let's do something like this. And right now we have overlapping geometry. That's probably not good. Let's go into our front view here, tab into edit mode. I'll just select these words here and just scale them down a little bit. So let's do something like this. And I'm also going to move these bottom words up a little bit. Let's select all of these here. And I'll move them up a little bit like so. And let's also grab these words here and I'm going to scale them down a little bit on the X axis. So, and I'll do the same thing over here. Okay, so let's unhide everything. And there you go, that is our finished dormer. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.